OK, in this video, let's talk about how to integrate this function from 0 to 4. Of course, what is this function with the funny set notation, right? You have to know that this right here is called the fractional part of x. And just like the floor function, you have to know the definition in order to proceed. So let's talk about what this means. Well, well, you can just look at its definition, the fractional part of x. This right here is defined to be the inside which is x and then minus the floor of the inside which is x in our situation. And once again, this right here is the notation for the fractional part. And this is the floor function. Well, well, let's do some examples. Let's talk about what we, we have. The fractional part of 2.3. Well, the easy way to do it is that if you have a positive decimal number in here, then you pretty much just get the decimal part. So you get 0.3. Okay? And of course, you can also use this little definition. You can put down 2.3 into x right here, and then minus the floor of 2.3, like this. Well, well, this is, of course, just 2.3 minus this is 2. And of course, you get 0 0.3 right here. So that's pretty much the answer for that. And let's do a whole number. If you have a whole number in here, let's say the fractional part of 6, well, there's no fractional part of a whole number. So you just get 0. And of course, you can also use this little definition. You can put 6 right here, and then minus the floor of 6. Here you get 6 minus this is still 6. Of course, as I said, you get 0. This is tricky when you have negative number. So let's see. If we have the fractional part of negative 1.2, the answer to this is not 0.2, nor negative 0.2. Right? You have to do it carefully. Well, follow the definition. Look at, we have a negative 1.2 in here. Do not take out a negative to the front. You have to put negative 1.2 into this x. And then minus the floor of negative 1.2, like that. Well, well, this right here is negative 1.2. And then we have to subtract this part right here when we have the floor of negative 1.2. Just like in the previous video, I showed you guys that, you actually get negative 2, like that. So, in the end, you have negative 1.2 plus 2, and you get positive 0 0.8. Let's make some observation first. First of all, the output of a fractional part is always going to be in between of 0 and 1, including 0 but not 1. Okay, you can get 0 but never exactly 1. Second, when you have negative number, do it carefully. And let me explain this with a number line again. So let's use this right here. Suppose you draw the number line, and let's say this is 0, this is negative 1, this is my negative 2. Negative 1.2 is right here. Okay, so this is negative 1.2. Well, well, as I said, the fractional part by definition is x minus the flow of x. So what you are looking at is actually this distance from where you are at to the greatest integer that's less than or equal to uh, the whatever you said. Yeah. So this right here, this distance is exactly 0 0.8 positive because you're talking about distance. So that's it, right? OK, so that's good. We still have to integrate. Let's talk about how to use a graph to integrate that. First of all, when x is 0, of course, you get 0 for the y value. So you have the first answer, first point right here, 0, 0. And if x is 0 0.1, for example, you get the fractional part. It's also 0 0.1. It's the whole number. So when you have 0 0.1, you get 0 0.1. So it's like going up like that. Similarly, when you have 0 0.9, you also get 0 0.9. Therefore, you will see it's 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So you actually have a diagonal line right here, right? In fact, um, flow of x is equal to x when x is in between of 0 and 1, not including 1. So you just get this right here. This is the 
this is just pretty much x. However, when x is equal to 1, well, uh, the fractional part of 1 is 0. Well, now when x is 1 is 0, you are going down right here. You have to make an open circle. And you continue. Next, if you put one point, let's say 2, as we discussed it over there, the fractional part is 0 0.2. And you pretty much have 1.2 and then uh, 0.2. And then, as well, well, if you have 1.9, you have 0.9. So you actually have a little diagonal line again, like that. Same thing, repeat. When x is exactly 2, you get 0, because there's no fractional part. And then you pretty much have this again, and then you pretty much have this again, like that. And in fact, you don't even have to go up. <laughs> OK, so this is nice. We just have to find the area under the curve. Do it by pieces. So first of all, this right here, you get a bunch of triangles now. The base right here is 1. The height right here is 1. Well, to get the area, half times base times height, you get 1 half. Same thing here. Here is 1, here is 1, you get 1 half. Same thing here. 1, 1, and this is 1 half, and 1, 1, you get 1 half. Well, well, depending on how you want to write this down, you can put this down as, as a 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half, and then plus 1 half. All together, 2. Okay? So perhaps this is just like I can use the chance to show you guys the graph of the fractional part. But of course, in fact, you could have just put this right here for that and integrate and also use the result from the previous video for it. I will just make a quick note right here. Seriously, work this out and you get 8, right? Integrate that by whatever you want, you know. <laughs> and then from the previous video, you see this right here is actually 6. When you subtract, you get 2. Same answer, of course. Right? Anyway, this right here is it. And perhaps you can let me know if you guys like the fractional part more or the dual function more. Comment down below, let me know. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe so you can get a lot of more interesting math videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and that's it.